by the way I left it at the end of uh, part three was I'd uh, put all the ballast, remaining ballast I had into the centre between the rails and locked it down recognising I have to come back and fill the shoulders in which you can see is exposed. The idea is you just fill a bit of stone to make it level with the sleepers which I now can do and perhaps lift it in areas that are a bit low and I know this section here right next to the camera and out for about six feet I've probably got a lift by about half an inch to an inch. I can feel the loco speeding up down this section so it just needs lifting a tiny bit. So uh, most of the ballast is now down. It's locked in, not just from the centre of the rails, but also the outsides. Now, aesthetically, it looks a lot more pleasing if you brush it all in from take the stone off the, the edges of the sleepers as well. And being a garden railway, that's exactly what I'll do. Um, it will, the stone will settle itself, if you believe. And then I'm ready for the final stage, which we'll come on to, but there's a quick pre-see. I'm gonna run I'm going to find the levels on this layout and I already know roughly where they are but uh, there are some areas that are dips not too huge you know an inch maybe or two and I just want to lift them slightly and put some more stone underneath and shake the, the stone away from the, the rail as I lift it and it will settle underneath so lifting it's not difficult at all lowering it is <laughs> don't do it <laughs> you have to unbolt sections and scrape the material out I'm not doing that so I'll just add more around the layout in the low pit parts only. Now there are a couple of ways of doing this and the easiest by far really is just put a loco on it, run it round at low speed and while it slows down it's obviously going uphill or greater friction like points or steep corners and when it accelerates it's obviously going downhill and so you're running into a trough and it's, I'll just do a quick mental map of that and I'll start sprinkling the ballast and adjusting the track accordingly thereafter. If I find any material bits, I will video some and tag it on the end. Right, well, um, I got my mind thinking about how I'm going to data log the track inclinations and declinations, and I, and I have lots of sensors, and I'm into electronics generally. I have quite a few Raspberry Pis kicking around the place. This is a this is one of the later models, but um, it's a bit too sophisticated for my needs. And on my small track, really, I don't need to log all this away. But it was more an academic exercise, as much as anything. So then I thought, well, let's not faff around with too big a computer program because I'll be there debugging it for weeks. Um, how about something I can just put a sensor on and put it on display? So this is um, an Arduino that's simpler. You just plug it in and it will um, display something on the display. I can cherry mander up. And then I realised, actually, I bought a piece of kit a little while ago which beats all of these in terms of size. It's one of these. It's an M5 stick. Now, I'm not here to sell anything. Um, but this is relatively cheap and the nice thing about this is um, it appeals to me because I don't have to do any coding. Part of its setup routine is a small little um, program that it's got pre-installed in it that uh, gives you temperature 
and um, incl inclination and declination. In fact, it has a six degree uh, motion, acceleration and degrees orientation in three, di three dimensions. So that's the six degrees of freedom. And so it wouldn't be very difficult if you wanted to, is to write yourself a piece of code on this, which you just put through the programming portal at the back here. Um, but I don't need to go that far with my layout. You know, obviously, if you've got a bigger layout, you might consider you want to data log it. And um, so you might spend the effort doing that. The other nice thing about this is there's a pre-installed battery in this. It won't last that long, but it'll last long enough to go around my track. And it also allows for um, sensors, you know, to general data logging. Uh, you can put a small program on there and it will data log away. It has wireless, so you can pump that data through some kind of messaging system. If you're into Node Red and that kind of thing, programming, you'll know what I mean. Um, and it will just drop it into a database of your choice, which might be on your wireless network at home on your wireless wireless environment. So very dirt cheap, dirt cheap, and it should appeal to even those who actually have an interest in doing this and haven't the foggiest on how to go about coding. So I'm going to give this a go. Um, I don't know what it cost me, about $15 I think it was, in two months wait from the States. Um, they're all the rage at the moment. It's an ESP32 on that, which is essentially a lot more sophisticated than the Arduino, a lot more. Um, but it's not as sophisticated as the Raspberry Pi, which is a bit overkill for our needs. It's about on the flat, it's showing a very wobbly in the direction of movement. There we are. Let's lift up this one so you can see which way it is. So if I bend it up and down, tilt it that way, the lower number is in the direction of travel, and the tilt that way and back away is the other number with the top one. So I don't want the top one varying by more than a degree or two, maybe three, it's probably more tolerant than the other. Um, you're not moving in that direction. But the lower one, as you see, if I push down on the loco at the front axis, I'm dropping the, uh, dropping it to 0.1 degrees, 0.2 degrees, lift it back up again. And I'm up at, I'm up at uh, sorry for the shaking of the camera, I'm up at 1.5 degrees. Now, actually, I don't think it is 1.5 degrees, I think there's a bias in it because the chip itself is stuck inside a package and so on and so forth. There's a little bit of grit involved um, in underneath it perhaps. So I'm, I'm looking at some systematic uh, numbers when I run around the track. They should all average out to zero obviously. Um, and I'm just going to run it around and have a look. So here we go. Okay, so I'm running around in the clockwise direction and one thing I have noticed is the, the number of sensors is very, very noisy um, and so it may be that this is not usable, but uh, we'll give it a go. Um, you can get around it by either averaging the numbers um, over multiple samples or uh, look at connecting an external sensor which is away from the CPU if it's uh, that which is creating the problem. The idea is run it clockwise as I'm doing take the readings, log them away, I'll have to do that manually on this occasion, and then turn the loco round, which I'll do in a little while, and take the readings in the same direction, in, in the opposite direction. Um, subtracting one number from the other at a particular similar point on the track will give you a fairly stable reading and remove those biases that I talked about earlier, being things like uh, you know the, the axles being at slightly different heights and and the, um, the package itself not being aligned properly with the axes. Um, but all fairly simply easy to do. Uh, coming up to the end of the uh, clockwise loop now, 
but it'd be interesting to see the reading I have here at the point of stopping is about 0.2 to 0, something like that. Then I'll put the loco round, um, minus 0.2 should I say to 0. I want to place it back on the track after some faffing around and putting the, um, the wheel sets back on the track, which I'm doing in about now. And then I'm getting 0.4, so I'm nearly half a degree or so. Um, bias between the clockwise and anti-clockwise anti measurements, something of that order. Um, that's to be expected. But I am quite alarmed at the variability in noise in these signals and it's proven to me that this is not actually that reliable unless you're doing some fairly sophisticated data logging and averaging. So as a project prototype that's um, yeah not particularly useful. I wouldn't say it's quite a failure, it's given me a good few ideas. Um, certainly for projects for the layout with electric, electrical locos on my layout outside. Um, then I've got dead man's handles, I've got vibration detection and voltage and battery conditioning. Dead man's handle in terms of derailment, it could sense and shut down the, process, shut down the power immediately. Um, in the loft on my double O gauge, I could actually build it small enough that I could build that into a wagon and have that give me some... Um, measurements of my own loft layout. Um, so it's all some good ideas there to pursue. Well, hopefully you found that uh, interesting and possibly even useful. And I'll catch you next time. Until then, cheers. Bye. -bye.